Hi everyone and welcome to another Langmuir Systems tutorial video. In the last video, we set some basic dimensions of our bottle opener. In this video, we'll cover setting constraints in your sketch. Constraints define the relationships between different elements of your sketch. But what exactly does that mean? Let's edit our sketch, and I'll give you a brief description of what each constraint does. The horizontal vertical constraint will set two points either directly horizontal or vertical to one another. The coincident constraint either bonds two points together or bonds a point to a line. The tangent constraint is similar to the coincident constraint, except it applies to the whole shape rather than to just a point and a line. The equal constraint will make two differing sized lines equal in length. The parallel constraint will make two lines parallel. The perpendicular constraint will make two lines perpendicular. The fixed constraint will make a specified point immovable. The midpoint constraint will set a point to the exact center of a line. The concentric constraint will set it so that two or more circles or arcs of differing radius will share a common center point. The collinear constraint takes two lines and makes them lie on the same plane. The symmetry constraint will create symmetry across a specified line. The curvature constraint will create smooth transitions between arcs of differing radiuses. Now that we know what each constraint does, let's create a construction line that we can set our hole to the midpoint of. Draw a regular line, click on it to highlight it, then select the construction option from the sketch palette. Construction lines are used for reference purposes and are not cut by CNC machines. They are indicated by dashed lines instead of solid lines, as you can see when I select the construction option. Now that we have a construction line, we can set our hole to its midpoint. Click on the construction line to select it, then select midpoint from the constraints toolbar. Click on the center point of our circle, and it will fix itself to the midpoint of the construction line. Notice how, no matter how we manipulate our sketch, the hole will not move from the midpoint of the construction line. Let's set a dimension of half an inch between the construction line and the bottom line of the bottle opener, then change the height of our bottle opener to 7 inches. Although the height of our bottle opener has been altered, notice that the hole did not move its orientation at all because of the constraints and dimensions we've set. As you set more dimensions and constraints, your sketch can end up looking pretty complicated. We can use the sketch palette to toggle certain views on and off for a more clear overall view of our project. Watch how my sketch view is affected as I deselect, then reselect each option. Next, let's try to set a parallel constraint between these two lines. Oops, it looks like we've received an error letting us know that our sketch is over constrained. We're receiving this message because, as you remember from our earlier video, we use the rectangle tool from the create toolbar to make the base shape for our bottle opener. Most shape tools already have built-in constraints so that they're easy to use and behave predictably. Next, we'll use the fillet tool to round the corners of our bottle opener. Select the two lines that form the corner when it's smooth, then either use this blue arrow to manually adjust, or use this text box to set an exact value that we'd like to use as the radius. Keep in mind that constraints and specified dimensions might be removed or overridden as we change and add to the geometry of our sketch. Remember to click Finish Sketch when you're done. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Join us next time to learn how to import files and trace over templates.